Hello and welcome again to Expanding the Bible. I'm your host Nathaniel Moreau. In this study, I would like to talk about should Seventh-day Adventists wear jewelry? Can a Seventh-day Adventist wear jewelry? What does the Bible say about wearing ornaments? And this is a video I want to uh, uh, talk mostly to my fellow Seventh-day Adventists. As some of you all may know who've been following this channel, I am a Seventh-day Adventist. I believe in keeping the commandments of God, adhering to the precepts of Scripture, and having the faith and testimony of Jesus Christ, which Revelation says is the spirit of prophecy. I believe in the Bible and the spirit of prophecy, the pen of inspiration. And this video, I am going to uh, talk mostly to my fellow Seventh-day Adventists. So I'm going to use some Adventist language in this video. Uh, I've dealt with the subject of jewelry before, a long time ago, and uh, when we first started uh, this uh, YouTube channel uh, about six years ago, I did a video on uh, can should Christians wear jewelry? Can a Christian wear jewelry. I'll have that video on the end screen at the end. But this video I want to go a little more deeper in and I want to address mostly my fellow Seventh-day Adventists here uh, because this is something that I believe it's uh, a, a silent issue, a silent major issue that's coming into the church. We believe in the Bible and listening to the precepts of the Bible and we understand, at least I understand in the early parts of, of, of the church history, that the Adventists, when we first started, we didn't wear jewelry, we didn't wear ornaments, but now it's common to have a wedding ring, some people wear uh, jewelry, uh, earrings, nose rings, and what forth, and we want to look at from the Bible, is that okay? How? What does the Bible say about dress? And we want to look at from the Old Testament and then go all the way to the New Testament and then look at some uh, quotes from the Spirit of Prophecy and see what Ellen White has to say on this issue. And we're going to look at a few quotes from uh, other uh, more predominant people, especially some uh, Adventist theologians. So let's open up our Bibles. Let's open up our Bibles to the book of Genesis. Let's go to the book of Genesis and let's see what thus saith the Lord. Let's see what the Bible says says about how the way we should dress for men and for women. Uh, here in Genesis we see that we see that uh, Jacob he is going to the Shechemites and he goes travels to the land of Shechem and we see that uh, the Shechemites were heathens. They were they were heathen nation. They were heathen people, pagan people. And some of the people in Jacob's household went and mingled with the inhabitants of this land. They mingled with the pagans, especially Jacob's daughter. And the result was she got raped. She got raped, and then they decided that they. They would marry and the sons of Jacob didn't like that so they decided to go as for revenge of the rape of their sister and they destroyed they killed uh, all the men that were in the city they destroyed the city and Jacob was was angry when he heard about this and he called the people together he called the people together and this is what he tells them he tells them in in Genesis Genesis chapter 35 and let's look at verse 2 through 4 it says then Jacob said unto his household and all that were with him put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments so Jacob says take out those that garment. That garment is not modest. Take that out. Be ye clean and to put away your strange gods. It says, And let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make an altar unto God, who answered me in the day of my distress, and was with me in which I in which in the way which I went. Verse 4. Watch this. It says, And they gave Jacob all their strange gods which were in their hand, and all their earrings which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under an oak which was by Shechem. So they gave to Jacob all their strange gods and all their what? All their earrings. Their earrings, they took them all away. They, went, they became clean. Jacob said, Be ye clean. Give me all your stuff all the things that are ungodly and they gave the ungodly things to Jacob and it says including their earrings. This is one of the first places that we see the negative effects of wearing jewelry or ornaments. When we put on the wearing of gold it, it, it has it has a tendency to 
uplift ourselves and make us, whether we know it or not, make us proud as it were, as we're going to see later on here in the Bible as we study further on. When we put on these things, it, it, it makes our mind forget about God because now we're all about uh, looking good and pleasing ourselves. Watch this. Let's go to... Let's go to the book of Isaiah. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. Because this happened to Israel. This happened to Israel. Israel started to put on the jewelry, the wearing of gold. And then this is what happened to them. And God started to pronounce judgments upon them. Watch this. This is what Israel was doing. Here in Isaiah chapter 3. Isaiah chapter 3. We're going to look at verse 8. And then we're going to jump down to verse 16. Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 8. It says... God is saying, for Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is fallen because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. So the things that Judah was doing, the things that God's people were doing, provoked God to anger. He did not like it. He did not like what his people were doing. They were going against the Lord. What were they doing? Jump down to verse 16. Jump down to verse 16. Verse 16 through 21, it says, Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion, the daughters of Jerusalem, the women of Israel, the women of Judah, God's people, because they are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling of their feet. Therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet, their coals and their round tires like the moon, the chains, the bracelets, the mufflers, the bonnets, and the ornaments ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings and the rings and the nose jewels. So God is saying, because you all walk with stretched forth necks and wanted eyes, you're haughty. You 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 think you all are it. You the women, God's people, the the women of the of Israel uh, felt entitled. They felt like if they are the ones in charge, they they were haughty. They were proud. They walked with wanted eyes and stretched forth necks. And God says, because you all are acting this way, I'm going to take away all the things that are making you feel proud. Because God's people should be humble. God's people should be humble, not proud for uh, walking with all this stuff that they're wearing. Clothes has a tendency to make us feel fancy, to make us feel like if we are entitled to something makes us feel like if we are of a higher class and God is calling us to be humbled well the people of Israel here were putting on certain things and God says these things are allowing you to feel haughty to feel uh, to walk out with stretch forth necks to think that you know it all they, you, they think they thought that they were high class citizens and that they knew better than everyone else God says, I'm going to take away all these things. And it specifically says the nose jewels, the rings, and the earrings, and all these golden ornaments, the bracelets, all these things. God says, I'm taking it away because they are causing you to fall. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel here. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 16. Ezekiel chapter 16. I've had this scripture, uh, I've had this scripture uh, being... Uh, brought up to me at one point by a non-Seventh-day Adventist, actually. Uh, and they were saying, you see, they use this scripture that we're about to read as saying that God condones the wearing of jewelry. Well, so far we found twice where he didn't. But here in Ezekiel chapter 16, here in Ezekiel chapter 16, uh, let's read verse 11. Uh, let's read verse 11 through 12. God is talking to his people, and he says, I decked thee also with ornaments, and I put bracelets on thine hands and a chain on thy neck and I put a nose jewel on thy forehead and an earring and earrings in thine ears and a beautiful crown upon thy head thou was decked with gold and silver boom right there God condones the wearing of gold the wearing of jewelry the wearing of earrings but is that really what God is talking about in this chapter I, I, I would like for you all to read this chapter 
read this chapter. The whole chapter of Ezekiel chapter 16 is a very interesting chapter, 63 verses, but a very interesting chapter about what God is telling His people, and it may apply to us today. It's very important that we read this. We're not going to get into this right now, but I urge you in your own study to read this chapter and see what God is saying. In summary, I wrote here a commentary that I wrote on what this chapter is talking about, and why God is saying that he put a nose jewel and earrings on this certain woman. Well, he ain't talking. God is not talking to a woman here. Watch this. It says, God is talking to Jerusalem. God is addressing Jerusalem. He's addressing the Jews. The whole chapter is an analogy that God is using. The language that God is talking here is so then we, so then his people here in Jerusalem, so then the people could understand. God is using terminology, he's using language that the people could understand. This is an analogy when God is saying that he decked this woman, Jerusalem, in jewels, in, 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 in gold, in silver, in fine raiment, with jewelry. This is an analogy that God is using. For us humans, wearing jewelry signifies beauty. It's what, especially the women, that's what they use. Jewelry, makeup, cosmetics, that's what they use to make themselves feel and look pretty. So this is the type of language and terminology that God is going to use. So we could relate to what he's talking about. It says, in Jerusalem, or the Jews, rose up to be a powerful and wealthy nation because God blessed them, but God then pronounces judgments on them because they use their wealth to be a harlot and compares them, later on in this chapter, he calls them a harlot and he compares them to the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, um, to Sodom and Samaria, and God blessed his people with money, but they spent it wrongfully. This chapter does not signify the wearing of jewelry. When God says, I decked this woman with silver and gold and put earrings on her ears, God is basically saying, I gave them economic wealth and prosperity. I gave them, I blessed them with money. I blessed them with all types of wealth. Especially back then in Israel's time, when jewelry was not only something that was used to make them look beautiful but it was also used as currency when you had a lot of money you would also wear some jewelry and sometimes you'll take it off and trade with it it wasn't the primary source of use but they did do that it was a sign of wealth and economic prosperity and God here is saying I took this woman and I decked her with silver and gold and I put a, I put a, a awesome clothes on her basically saying this woman which is representing Jerusalem God's people meaning God is saying I gave them economic prosperity I gave them economic prosperity, but instead of them using their wealth to bless others, they decided to spend it all on themselves, and they decided to be a harlot. God likens them unto a harlot, and likens them unto the cities of Samaria and Sodom, two wicked cities that, were, that became pagan. God likens the Jews uh, unto these cities because they spent the money the wrong way. This in no way is a literal thing that God is saying that he actually took a woman and put uh, uh, ornaments and gold and silver on her. That is not what this is talking about. It is an analogy that God is using. Watch this. Let's go to the book of Hosea. Let's go to the book of Hosea right after the book of Daniel. Hosea chapter 2. Let's go to the book of Hosea chapter 2. Hosea chapter 2 and verse 13. See what God is telling his people again. God says, And I will visit upon her th at, and I will visit upon her the days of Balaam, wherein she burned incense unto them, and she decked herself with her earrings and her jewels, and she went after her lovers, and forget me, saith the Lord. So God is saying, you all put some, you all, your women just put some jewels and, and, and decked yourself with earrings, and you went after your lovers, and you forget me. Meaning that when, when, when we put on jewelry, we have a tendency to forget about God. Because now we're thinking about ourselves. We're thinking about pleasing ourselves. We're thinking about trying to look good. We're thinking about uh, 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 our, our vain, our vain uh, 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 clothes and wardrobe. When God commands us to dress simply and plainly. 
uh, in, in another scripture, I can't remember if it's Isaiah or, or Jeremiah, that perfectly goes along with this. Um, it, might be, it might be Ezekiel. I can't remember specifically. But God is addressing the women of, of, of Israel. He's addressing Judah. And he's ta telling his people, you all are like women who, 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 who in vain you make yourselves look pretty. You put some, some paint on your face. You put some cosmetics and some jewels. And you put on a nice wardrobe to go after some lovers. But you make yourselves pretty in vain because in the heart they are full of corruption. They're worldlings because back in the day only the heathen used to wear these types of things. Jezebel used to paint her face, used to put on all this jewelry. She was a heathen. This was a common practice amongst the heathen, especially amongst prostitutes back in the day. But let's go over, let's go to the New Testament here. Let's see what Paul tells Timothy. Let's see what Paul tells Timothy here in 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 2, 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. Let's see what the Lord says. It says, In like manner also that women adore themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and, 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 and sobriety, sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. So God through Paul, the Holy Spirit through Paul is giving us instruction on as to how we should dress. And and more this this right here is more talking to the women, but it could also be applied to the men because we see the men also wearing jewelry. We see the men wearing earrings, we see the men wearing uh uh uh, uh, uh rings. And 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 God here is saying that we should not be wearing gold or costly array or pearls. We do not need none of this stuff to look beautiful. We don't need none of this stuff to look good. What makes us look good is the heart, the women professing godliness. Women professing godliness with a meek and contrite heart and spirit and a humble attitude to God is worth far more and looks far more beautiful than a woman with all this silver and gold and costly apparel. To our earthly eyes, that may be beautiful, but for a person who's in tune with the Spirit of God, the outward doesn't really matter. It's the inside what matters. Is this woman proud? Because look at how the way she's wearing, she's, she's, she's proclaiming herself, decked herself with silver and gold like if she's some sort of queen, when we shouldn't even be parading ourselves as proud as that. Ellen White writes, um, she writes that, uh, especially during Christmas time, when the self-proclaimed Christian women come out and they're decked with silver and gold, they got all sorts of jewelry on, and, 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 they, and they're wearing costly clothes, and yet you have the poor all around you. Well, these women, they don't care about the poor. They, they walk right past by them like if it's no big deal. Why? Because how the way they are dressed has conditioned their mind that they are top. It's kind of like what happened to Israel here. Let's go to Peter. Let's Let's go to Peter. Let's go to Peter. First Peter. Let's go to First Peter. First Peter chapter three. First Peter chapter three. First Peter chapter three and verse three through four. We profess to be Bible believing Christians. And if this is the instruction that God has for us, then we must by all means faithfully, humbly follow it. Because it gives no excuse here about why to wear silver or gold. Why should we wear gold? It here says in 1 Peter chapter 3, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 3 through 4, Peter says, under the same inspiration by the Holy Spirit, says, Whose adorning let it not be the outward adorning of the plating of the hair, or the wearing of gold, or the putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even even the ornaments of a meek and quiet spirit. doesn't say the ornaments of silver and gold hanging from our ears or in our fingers or in our nose or in our heads or in our clothes or in our wrists. doesn't say that type of ornament. It says the ornaments from God, which is a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God a great price. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves. So the holy women of 
scripture, they adorn themselves how? They adorn themselves with a meek and quiet spirit, a humble spirit that is professing of godliness. Proverbs 31 woman. Proverbs 31 woman, which is a virtuous woman. The holy women of old time, Peter says, this is how the way they used to adorn themselves. This is what made them beautiful. They, what made them beautiful was their attitude, their, their calmliness, how the way they dressed, meek and plainly according to how the way God commands, not with the outward adorning of silver and gold and pompous clothing. This is not how the way God commands us to dress. Now watch this. I would want to, I want to read a couple quotations here from the Spirit of Prophecy from Ellen White. Uh, a couple quotations here. This is taken from the book Testimonies to Ministers, uh, page 180. Because a lot of people say, well, I don't wear jewelry. I don't wear jewelry, but I wear a wedding ring. Because it, 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 it is a sign to show people that we are married. Well, is a wedding ring okay under the eyes of God? Let me ask you some. When we read here about the golden ornaments, the silver and the gold and the, and the earrings, did it make any excuse for jewelry? The Bible didn't make any excuse for jewelry. The Bible said, get rid of all this gold. God says, I'm getting rid of all your earrings, all your nose jewels, all your ornaments in general. God says, I'm taking it away. Here, Paul and Peter says, I don't want you all to wear gold. So, if, 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 the, if thus saith the Lord is a specific command as to not wearing gold, why are we trying to make an excuse that God will be okay with it just as a sign that we're married a wedding ring? When we, when we look at rings in the Bible, uh, there's nowhere in the Bible where you're going to find rings in the context of marriage. You're not going to find that in the Bible. When the Bible mentions rings, it's usually in a context of a king or ruler who uses it. That was what the kings used to use to put their stamp seal uh, when they were to pass laws and proclamation. When, when the Pharaoh took his ring and put it upon the finger of Joseph. I, I've had people say, you see, Joseph wore a ring, so God's okay with it. The custom of the land in those days under that context was whoever had the royal seal that was who was in charge and in their day the royal seal they would carry it around in their fingers and when Pharaoh took that royal seal in the form of a ring and gave it to Joseph that was that sign saying that Joseph is second in command he represents the Pharaoh he's the one in charge so whenever there's a law boom that royal seal stamped it Today we don't have that. We don't use rings for royal seals. We got already the royal seal with the, with the ink and they stamp it on the paper or whatever bill or law we, they sign and, and, and the uh, seal of the United States or whatever country that, uh, that is in the world today. That's what they use. That's what we use. We don't use rings to stamp a seal as back in biblical times. No way is that justifying jewelry, and you're not going to find it in the context of marriage. But here, Ellen White is talking about when the Adventist missionaries left the United States and went to a foreign country, and in these foreign countries, it was basically the custom of the land that when you get married, especially the woman must wear a wedding ring to, as a symbol that they're married, and these Adventist missionaries started to, to, to become one to follow this custom. They said, well, it might be okay for us to take on the custom of wearing the wedding ring. And this is what Ellen White says. She says, some have had a burden in regard to the wearing of a marriage ring, feeling that the wives of our ministers should conform to this custom. All this is unnecessary. Let the minister's wives have a golden link which binds their, soul, their souls to Christ, to Jesus Christ. A pure and holy character, the true love and meekness and godliness that are the fruit born upon the Christian tree and their influence will be secure everywhere. She's following scripture here. Scripture, the, 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 let it be the hidden man of the heart, not the outward adorning. She goes on further. She says, the fact that a disregard of the custom occasions remark is no good reason for adopting it. Americans can make their position 
understood by plainly stating that the custom is not regarded as obligatory in our country, the United States. We need not wear the sign, for we are not untrue to our marriage vow, and the wearing of the ring would be no evidence that that were true. Then she says, watch this, I feel deeply over this leavening process which seems to be going on among us in the conformity to custom and fashion. Then she writes, not one penny should be spent on a circlet of gold to testify that we are married. So here Ellen White says specifically, we don't need to wear this sign. This is a leavening process which, is, which will leaven us. It's, it's a leavening process that coming into the church. And what did Paul say? Paul says, uh, no, you're not a little leaven, leaveneth the whole lump. Leaven is likened unto sin in the Bible, and here Ellen White is saying that the wearing of jewelry, the wearing of the wedding ring, is useless. It's a leavening process. She like, that, that's, that's basically declaring that it is sin. Because leaven is likened unto sin in the Bible. She says that wearing a wedding ring, not wearing a wedding ring, we need not to wear the sign for we are not untrue to our marriage vow. Wearing a ring, they say, oh, you see, we're true to our marriage vow. We have a ring on. If that were so, if the wedding ring was so important to marriage and the wedding vow, then it would stop divorce. But it doesn't stop divorce. People just, when they're going to cheat on a spouse, they take the wedding ring off and boom, they do whatever they want to do. A wedding ring doesn't stop divorce. If it would, then it would work, but it, it doesn't. Spending money on for fashion just because the world does it doesn't mean that Adventists should. We are called to be a peculiar people. A humble people, people who follow the Bible, and the Bible says, especially to the women, dress plainly. Well, you should dress, the, uh, the, the adornment of the women, of our women, should be a God-like attitude. But we can't get this type of attitude if we're wearing gold and silver and pumping up ourselves, making ourselves look high. Look what Ellen White says again. Watch what Ellen White says again in Testimonies to the Church, Volume 3, page 366. Ellen White says, To dress plainly, abstaining from display of jewelry and ornaments of every kind, is in keeping with our faith. So abstaining from jewelry and ornaments of every kind, that includes earrings, nose rings, bracelets, diamonds, necklaces, wedding rings, engagement rings, and any type of rings that you may call, abstaining from jewelry of every kind is in keeping with our faith. Goes further. One more quote. One more quote here. Testimonies to the Church, Volume 4, page 630. Ellen White says, the apostle, what has given, the apostle has given most explicit directions on this point. And we read this verse. I will therefore that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. We've already read this scripture in, in Timothy by Paul. Ellen White, taught, Ellen White adds to the scripture, she says, Here the Lord, through his apostle, speaks expressly against the wearing of gold. Let those who have had experience see to it that they do not lead others astray on this point by their example. The ring encircling your finger may be very plain, but it is useless and the wearing of it has a wrong influence upon others. A little leaven will leaven the whole lump, though we may be wearing what we may call plain jewelry. You see, it's, not, it's just a ring. It doesn't have diamonds. It's not a, a, a large carrot. It's just a plain Jane ring. She says it's still useless, and the wearing of it has a wrong influence on others. She even goes as far to say that, that the Bible, when Paul says not to wear gold or pearls, 
She says here, the Lord through his, through his apostles speaks expressly against the wearing of gold. We are not to wear gold in ourselves of any kind. Not because just Ellen White didn't say so, God revealing this through her, but she points us to the scriptures and the Bible does not allow us to wear such things. So why do we do it? Because it was voted okay at the general conference during the 50s and 80s and, and put in the church manual? That's a little leaven that was coming in. That was a, mista a mistake that we did. Back before the 50s, Adventists... It was very rare you'll find an Adventist wearing jewelry. Today it's almost common. Let's read this quote. I want to read this quote here. I want to read this quote here by, by Cardinal John Henry Newman. Uh, so this Cardinal here in his book, An Essay on the Development of Christian Doctrine, page 374, this is what he says. He says, The ring in marriage are of all pagan origin and sanctified by their adoption into the church. So this Roman Catholic cardinal who was giving the history of certain things that the church is, it was doing and how did it get to it, he was, if you actually read the, the, the page or the chapter, he's talking about how in the early stages of the Christian church in the days of Constantine, Constantine who wanted to mix the worship of paganism and Christianity switched the day of worship from Saturday to Sunday because that was the pagans' chief day of worship. They worshipped the sun god. And he brought in all these statues and renamed it after, after uh, uh, Christian saints. Um, and, 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 and that way the Christians can worship these Christian Bible characters in the form of statues. And the pagan heathens can worship the statues because the pagans always worshipped idols. So he was mixing paganism with Christianity. And one of the things that were, that were brought into the church was the, was the ring, the wearing of jewelry, and the wedding ring. These, he says, this cardinal says, was brought by the pagans. Because when they came together to be married, the pagan's chief deity was the sun god and the moon god. Guess what? A golden circle or a silver circle, gold for the sun, silver circle for the moon. And when they would put that sun symbol in their fingers, that was basically in the marriage ceremony, a pact being made by the two spouses that by the by the sun god they swear by the sun god that they will be married to each other but we are called to 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 make our vows in front of the almighty god not to the sun god and the almighty god has written in his word not to be wearing gold i want to wear i want to read this last quotation here by by the uh the renowned the great adventist theologian uh, and scholar uh, Samuel Bakioki, the late Samuel Bakioki, in his book Christian Dress and Adornment, uh, page 96, uh, uh, Samuel Bakioki uh, was an ex Roman Catholic. He used to live in Italy, that's where he was born and raised. And Italy is still a country, it's a pure Roman Catholic country, and still predominantly is strong on wearing the wedding ring. And this is what he says he says, Personally, personally, I must confess that I could have worn a wedding band conscientiously until now, though I have never done so, because I viewed it solely through the glasses of my Italian culture as a symbol of marital status. For the same reason, I have never dissuaded my wife from wearing her wedding band. However, now that I have learned about its pagan origin, its negative effect, its negative impact on the history of Christianity, and its potential leavening influence upon my spiritual life and that of others. You see, this guy uses similar language as the Bible and the spirit of prophecy when she says, Ellen White says, this is a leavening custom that's, that, that's coming into the church. He says, this is a leavening influence. He says, I could never consider wearing a marriage ring in good conscience. I am pleased that my wife also has come to view the wedding band from a different perspective. So he says, listen, 
I could have wore the wedding ring because I just saw it through my Italian culture. Worldly culture tells us, wear a ring. Do follow these traditions that were of men. But the Bible says, in vain do we... Uh, 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 in vain do we, we, we forsake the commandments of God that we may keep our own traditions. For well, God says, in vain do ye worship me, keeping the traditions of men and laying aside the commandments of God. The commandments of God are stated plainly in his word. We are not to be wearing gold. We are not to be wearing silver. We are not to be wearing earrings, nose jewels, or pearls. Those are things that God does not want us. They do not perfect Christian character. God calls us to be a peculiar, humble people, to dress plainly and modestly, and He calls us, he calls us to be His peculiar people, His chosen ones, those that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And the commandments of God are very clear when it comes to the wearing of jewelry. So this is what I wanted to talk about today. This is what I wanted to share with my Seventh-day Adventist friends. I got many friends that are Seventh-day Adventists, and some wear jewelry, some don't. I'm not saying that those who wear jewelry are bad people. I'm not saying that. They, they are good people. I got good friends who wear jewelry, but this is what the Bible says. This is what Ellen White in the Spirit of Prophecy say. This is what we must listen to. It's thus saith the Lord counsel. So this is what I wanted to talk about today. I hope you were blessed by this. Uh, if you like this video, please press like. Also, don't forget to subscribe. We're also on Facebook at Expounding the Bible. Until then, this is your host, Nathaniel Morrell, saying, have a blessed day.